Okay, so in this video, what I want to do is work with a an Excel file, and uh, this data contains monthly product sales. And you can see here that it's recorded for an entire year, and there's and there's about five products involved. Uh, and what I want to do is I want to create what we call range names, and this is a good way to refer to certain uh, ranges of cells for any sort of analysis that you'd want to do. So this, let me demonstrate. Let's say, for example, I want to just kind of uh, get the get the sum of product A over the time period over this uh, over these twelve months here. So if I were to say something like total right underneath, and I'll just do a right align. And let's say, for example, I, I'm going to get the sum of this product here. So I'm, I'm selecting all of the uh, cell units per month, right? So I'm going to go ahead, select that, hit enter, and I get a sum here. Now, let me just make sure I selected everything. Notice I forgot one more uh, observation. So let me just include that highlighted, hit enter, and that will be the total amount of cells for product A over a one year time period. Now, instead of having to select the entire range of cells here, what I could do is select, uh, I can select, say, for example, everything from January to December for product A. And right here on the top left, there's this name box where you could give it a name, this entire range of cells that I just selected, we can give it a name. Let's say we'll call that uh, product A. So I'll type that in, underscore A, and then I'm gonna hit enter. And whenever I want to do any sort of analysis on product A, I just have to type that in uh, inside my function. So let me say equals sum, and instead of selecting the array of data, I'll just type in product A. As, as I'm typing it, the IntelliSense give me, gives me suggestions. And I, I want to select the one that looks like this. This is the the um, the name box. Uh, this is the name that I provided in the name box. So I'm going to go ahead and select that one. Uh, I'll close the parentheses and hit Enter. And uh, this would be a, a shortcut instead of me having to select the array of data. Now, there is another way of doing this. And um, let me go ahead and demonstrate that. I'm going to select the array that I want to create a name for. And then I'm going to go to, let's see, I believe it's going to be under yeah, formulas tab. And then I'm going to select define name. And then here, notice the, where it says refers to sales data is the, the name of the worksheet. And it's selecting the array of data here that I, that I want. So that's correct. And I can give it a name. Now, I already have the name called product A. So I don't want to press OK because um, that's already uh, in existence. Now, one thing that you want to be careful of is uh, if, you, if you have a column that you want to name and it has two words or there's going to be a space in between its name, uh, you're going to get an error. So you want to use an underscore. So you don't want to have product space A. Uh, and that's why we have product underscore A, right? So I'll just go ahead and do, uh, I'll just do A2 just for just a second example. Press OK. And uh, that will be stored in the back end. Now, if I, if I want to go back and make any sort of changes, I can go to the name manager. And that's found under the formulas tab. And I have the ability to make any sort of edits or delete any, uh, any sort of range names that I've created. All right. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete that one. And I'll just say OK. I'll close off of that. And that's this, the second way of uh, creating uh, a range name. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and delete these totals that I created for an example, and just demonstrate something else. So I'm going to I'm going to say equal sign sum, and I want to select the entire column here. So I'm just going to 
click on where it says B, notice how my cursor changes to an upside down or downward uh, arrow. So this is selecting the entire column. And notice inside the function, it says B colon B. And that's to let you know we're not doing any sort of individual or specific type of range cells. We're just saying B column B. So anything in column B. And I'm going to hit enter. And so you'll notice Excel kind of uh, over the years have, have updated that uh, prior to this, you would probably get an error because we're, so, we're trying to get a sum. And within the sum of ranges, we have a product A. Um, and what Excel does in the back end is it disregards any sort of data type that's not numeric. And in this case, it would be product A. So, but it's only including any sort of numeric information. It's going to sum those up. So this is a really good way to use things if you anticipate more data to be recorded later on. So notice, uh, let's say, for example, we start off again in January for the next time period. And let's say there is like 10,000 uh, cells that happens uh, that next time period, right? So if I hit enter, Notice what happens here is it increases in the sum. Uh, hopefully that gives you uh, a, a better idea of how this works. Now, just keep in mind that if you do select this, the specific ranges here and then you give it a name, then it's only going to refer to those specific ranges. So if I want to just create, say, for example, let us say, I'll do this. I will delete this and I'm going to select the entire range and I'm going to give this entire column B a name. So I'll call this product and I'll say product A3 for the second example, for the third example. And anytime now, if I were to say some product, and I'll do A3. Oh, I got a, let's see here. I got a name uh, equal, uh, question mark error. So let me see what that is all about. Okay, let me just do that one more time. I'm going to say sum product. And then this is the one that I want to do a sum on. There you go. Hit enter. So I just probably didn't uh, completely spell out that name. Uh, the first time around. Now, again, if I want to add additional records of product A, it's going to automatically account for that. So I'll just go ahead and say 10,000, right? So it automatically reflected. And this is with a name convention uh, that I indicated when I selected the entire column, right? So again, any changes that you want to make, go to the formulas tab, name manager, and then you can uh, make any sort of changes uh, from there.